Q4 all-wheel drive. Let's check it out. All right, guys, we're going to start with the front end of this Levante Q4. Uh, we have the uh, LED headlights, LED daytime running lights. We have our fog lights right in here. We have functional vents for cooling as well as functional vents on the bottom for cooling. We have an adaptive shutters here in the grill. You can see those, they open and close based on how much air the radiator needs to keep the engine cool. We have our Maserati badge, as well as your front end camera for the ADAS, that's our level one autonomous driving. That includes uh, blind spot monitoring, cross traffic alert, right? This car does not have the lane keep assist or active braking. So as we move up the hood, we have a nice sloping hood, the nice Maserati badge, as you can see, this is a 2021 badge. Badge has changed for 2022. Nice line sweeping up the hood into the windshield area, into the A-pillar. As we come around the side here, and look at the wheels. This color of this car is Grigio Matarea. The wheels are uh, matched, color matched to the car, which I think is really quite cool. That attracted me to this car in particular. These are 265 on the width, 45 sidewall, 20 inch wheel. Standard steel rotors, standard two piston calipers, as this is the base model. If you moved up to the Levante S, you'd get bigger brakes and bigger rotors. Levante Trofeo, same thing, but this being just a plain old Q4, it has your standard braking pattern. Come down the side, you have your side uh, directional indicators, color matched on the side mirror, chrome door handles on front and back, our Maserati badge right here, again that is changing for 2022, fuel filler, and then the back wheels, same 20 inch wheel um, and uh, this is also 265 45 20 on the tire and these are continental all seasons as we move around the back we have our quad exhaust tips that are functional no fake vents in the back which I like no diffuse no awful looking diffuser um, hanging off the back, plenty of ground, ground clearance on this on this uh, Levante. The standard Q4 badge right there. The Maserati script right up here, which is changing for 2022, as well as the Levante badge on the bottom right. You have a spoiler to channel air over the top of the car. We have our rear view, or excuse me, rear wiper as well. All right, here's our key fob for Maserati. Very weighty key fob. Nice looking, but very weighty. You open up, double click, and that opens up the rear. And of course I have my golf clubs, so we can show that we can fit a set of golf clubs in the back with the seats up. So we move in here. This is where you can lock rear, uh, rear storage area, as well as close the, um, the tailgate. In the back here, we also have room for your books, manuals, service uh, booklet, as well as some information on the tire. And you have a pass-through into the back seat in case you have skis or something long like that that you need to do. You have tie-downs here and here, which is helpful. And now we'll move around into the interior. Okay, so now we're in the back seat here <clears throat> I am five foot eleven and I have plenty of room for my knees with the seat set for me as driver we move to the center console we have two air vents and we also have a hidden compartment with two USBs and a 12 volt so you got your connectivity back here armrest comes down two cup holders 
Nice and soft material. Very soft, actually, for an armrest. I like that. And then we have our door panels, right? We have soft tufts material on top, followed by leather inserts, some gloss black, some silver accents, which I like. And then you have your lock and unlock and window controls, as well as a nice soft armrest. The seats, all leather. Back seat backs, leather up here, however, plastic here. So I don't like that at all. That's no good. Cargo net, no good. This is an a Maserati Levante. You need to have a leather pouch here. Cargo nets are not going to work. And the same here on the back of the driver's seat. We have leather up top, but then your hard material here and a cargo net, which isn't going to work at all for me in a car at this price point. So let's move around to the front seat. All right, guys, here we are in the front seat. Again, like I said, I'm five foot 11. Got plenty of headroom. We have our center console, as you can see down here, right? We have our stick shift to go through our eight speed uh, ZF transmission. A little bit confusing for me because in order to put it in reverse, you push forward in order to put it in drive push and push forward or put it in drive you got to push pull back not a big fan of that um back in the park you push the button on top it's okay but it takes a little bit getting used to we have the entertainment system here this is moder all new maserati connect since this is a stellantis product it is a chrysler u connect 5 for 2021 for maserati that gives you wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, easy touch screen, your home button, you can go to media, you can go to your comfort modes for your seat and as far as your heat and air and where you want it, uh, seats and steering wheel, you can go over that, you can turn on your heated steering wheel, turn on your heated seats from here, as well as moving to your phone, you got your vehicle settings, turn off your auto stop stop start even though that resets every time you go ahead and turn the car off and start it back on it automatically turns back on um, I'd rather just push this button up here to turn it off while I'm driving um, because it will reset every time you turn the car off adjust your temperature up either up top or down below with this switch here and then you have your manual controls as well as here where you have your rear defrost, your front defrost, you can set this on auto so they're synced together so the temperature for the driver is the same as the temperature for the passenger. Uh, and then you have your max AC if you really wanna get things going, then you have your manual fan control here. Down the bottom, on the front here, you have, I don't know if you can see, but you have a USB, a SD card, and an aux jack with a nice little storage area here. This does not have wireless charging. All right, you have to, that's an option, and you have to move up to the Levante S for wireless charging. Don't like that. Uh, this is an expensive car, uh, and uh, even with the base model, and you need to have, I believe you need to have wireless charging. Down here you have your two cup holders and a 12 volt. This is a cigarette lighter. I don't know anybody smokes anymore, but Maserati still puts lighters in their cars, but this is, will also work as a 12 volt. And then we have over here, we have your different modes. We can turn the traction control off. We can go to off-road mode, which will automatically adjust the height of the SUV. Ice, which is your um, increased efficiency mode. You wanna kinda of use that cruising on the highway and not doing much. You can put that on, maximize your fuel fuel economy, or in the winter if you don't want to have too much torque going to the back wheels too soon. Then you have your Sport, which is what we're going to operate in on the drive today. And then we have our suspension, where it's a bumpy road mode where you can turn that on, and that's going to soften up the suspension for you when that's on. Electronic parking brake. And this will raise and lower the height of the car manually, if you would like. There's your four-way flash. This will turn the volume up or down on your head unit. And then we have in here, nice storage area in here. We also have another 12-volt right here, 
as well as some storage and that off on switch down there is a cool box so you will get air conditioning in here to keep something cool it's not a refrigerator but it will keep things cool in the summer heat all right so let's talk about price of this levante this levante base model seventy seven thousand dollars with the three options that this car has is eighty three thousand dollars all right here is our maserati twin turbo v6 engine this is the base engine so this engine is going to have 354 horsepower 345 pound feet of torque made it to a eight speed zf automatic transmission all right this is the base model you have two other engine options as you move up in trims levante s same engine but up tuned to 424 horsepower or the levante trofeo which gets the ferrari derived v8 twin turbo 580 horsepower but a big step up in price like i said this car was 83,000 with uh, after only three options you get the trofeo right you're going to be looking at with a well option trofeo with the v8 150 to 160 thousand dollars so double the price is it worth it that's up for you to decide i decided you know what this is going to be my daily car a car that my son can use uh so you know what we're just going to go with the base engine we're going to save some money and we're just going to lease this thing for three years see how it holds up Five thousand miles a year for three years and we're going to be checking in now and again to see how this thing is doing uh as time goes by all right guys now we're going to take this thing out give it a little drive here we are in sport mode. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear the exhaust, but Maserati, even for a small V6, really does a nice, nice sound on the exhaust. So overall, what I really like about the drive of this car, and we've driven this car about 1,300 miles now, is even though it's a small engine, uh, their smallest engine is 354 horsepower, it moves the car just fine, and it's not going to be the fastest thing in the world, but it moves the car beautifully down the road. It's not overpowered. you got your all-wheel drive putting the power down at all four corners when you step on the gas which makes perfect sense. Um, now, what I thought maybe what would happen is that the base model would be a little bit less sharp on the steering, uh, you know, because this is the entry level. Maybe they, they skipped a little bit on the suspension and on the steering, not at all. It's down on power compared to the upper level trims, but at the end of the day, this thing handles very, very sharp, very, very quick, very, very responsive. You point this thing in the direction you want it to go, and it goes. So that is absolutely fantastic as far as I'm concerned, as they didn't skip on the driving experience, even with a lower powered engine under the hood. beautifully in sport mode even with automatic shifting it holds the gear really well so you're always going to be in that gear when you need power powering through the turns
And if you want to put it back in comfort and uh, just cruise or in uh, ice on the highway, it'll do that too. And so it is really a well put together, well put together truck. Or SUV, I should say. It's not a truck. Based on a car. Basically, if you think about it, it's a lifted Maserati Ghibli. Uh, same platform. Um, it's just lifted. All right, guys, that's pretty much it on this 2021 Maserati Levante. What do I like about it? You know, we got 1,300 miles on it right now. Um, Three-year, 15,000-mile lease. What do I like about it? I love the way it drives. I love the way it sounds. I love the way the gearbox performs. Even for the smallest engine, I think it's got plenty of power for everyday use. Uh, and having fun with it on the weekend. Uh, this is a car that my son and I drive uh, every day, whether it be to school or shopping or to the mall or what wherever. don't I like. All right, the price. Overall, if you're going to buy this car, Brian, new at $83,000, does not make much financial sense. We leased it. The residual on the lease after three years and 15,000 miles is $41,000, which means when I return this car to the dealer, in three years and have 15,000 miles on it, it's gonna be worth $41,000 if I wanna buy it. And that is a guess on the market. So you can tell what they're expecting, a 50%, 51, 52% drop in value for depreciation in the first three years, even though it's only 15,000. So if you're gonna get a new one, lease it like I did, you're only gonna pay the depreciation and if you want to keep it after the lease is up, you can buy it then. Or if you don't want it, then you can just turn it back in and you can lease it, either lease another new Maserati or go and uh, get something else if this didn't uh, float your boat. That's it from this 2021 Levante. Uh, thanks for joining me today. And I will see you on the next video. Take care, everybody.